Hi, I'm Antonio Sala. In this video, we are going to continue with our series on ellipsoids, and we'll discuss here 3D examples of ellipsoids and also some examples of degenerate cases, which will be cylinders, hyperboloids, or lower dimension bodies. If we recall from previous videos, this kind of inequalities with identity or with a multiple of identity matrix generating them gave rise to spheres or hyperspheres. These inequalities with a diagonal matrix generating them with positive values at the diagonal generated ellipsoids aligned with the axis and in a generic case scaling unit sphere via, di via diagonal scaling and then rotating we got any arbitrary ellipse but as diagonalization allows us to, to express any symmetric positive definite matrix as rotation diagonal scaling rotation inverse then this means that any positive definite matrix described an ellipsoid whose semi-axis length were the inverse of square root of eigenvalues and semi-axis direction were the eigenvectors. If we go to MATLAB, we can generate the blue circle axis aligned ellipse in red or rotated ellipse in yellow as this code for the circle. This code for the axis aligned ellipsoid, diagonal M, and introducing a rotation matrix in 2D, we can generate this P, in which even if I have negative elements, the matrix has positive eigenvalues, so it defines an ellipsoid, which I plot with this code, so we generated this figure. Let us now have a look to three-dimensional examples. For instance, if I get this P matrix in here, then the eigenvalues are the three of them are positive, so semi-axis length will be 1 divided by the square root of these eigenvalues, 2.7, and 0.4. The thing is that in order to plot this 3D ellipsoid, I will generate a z1, z2, z3 vector and plot with f implicit 3 the boundary of such a 3D body. And here we have it. I also plotted the intersection with the horizontal plane in order to have a better perspective in red. And of course, we can move it and rotate it at will if we have MATLAB in order to get an idea on what this shape is. The next thing we are going to discuss are the generate cases. Which ones? Well, either this P may be singular, or if I choose an inverted matrix representation, this Q may be singular. So, what do these things mean? In the first case, we may be considering, let's say, this equation. And what does it mean? Well, if we carry out the matrix multiplication, we get this. So as you can see, the second coordinate is unrestricted. It can take any value, because it does not appear in the constraint, then it's completely free. So we will get an ellipse that will slide in the y direction infinitely. So this is the shape of a cylinder. And that shape happens when we have one zero eigenvalue, so P is singular, but the rest of the eigenvalues are positive. So I had this example of this P that, okay, apart from round of error, it has one of the eigenvalues being zero and two positive ones, so the radius would be the inverse of the square root of this stuff, so the first one gives sort of infinite radius, which yields the cylinder shape. So radius will be 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and 1000, which is infinite, apart from round-off stuff. So if we see 
the 3D shape generated by that semi-definite matrix. Then we get, of course, this cylinder and we can play with it if we wish to see its shape so it has an elliptical base. And then we have the cylinder extended, extending to infinity. The second case we are going to consider is the one with singular Q in here. So if I am thinking on the inverse of this matrix, if instead of zero, I put there a very small epsilon, 10 to the minus 10, then equations would be x squared plus z squared plus 10 to the 10 y squared less than 1. So when this thing tends to infinity, the only way of doing this is with y equals 0. So in this way, we are actually writing two equations, one that y must be, of course, 0, and then x and z. Verify this equation a circle in this case. So these are lower dimensional ellipsoids, like this red planner thing instead of the whole cylinder. The last case we are discussing is when I have negative eigenvalues in P, then that shapes are no longer ellipsoids, but the boundary of these shapes are sort of hyperbolas. And depending on the sign, we will refer to this interior or to this interior. So hyperboloids may arise. I had something prepared. Even if all elements of P are positive, this has negative eigenvalues. Here we have it. So it depicts an hyperboloid whose boundary has this kind of shape. And we can rotate to see, you know, what it's all about. Well, these kind of shapes arise from non-positive definite matrix, with negative eigenvalues, but these degenerate cases are not usually of interest in control or statistics because, well, in control or statistics, we want minimum variance, minimum variability. We want to ensure that things are close to where they should be, operating point, expected value. So shapes that can go to infinity, such as infinite cylinders or hyperboloids are not usually considered in these contexts. Hyperbolic geometry, let's say, is for instance of use in special relativity in physics, but okay, not in statistics and control. So with this presentation of 3D ellipsoids, cylinders and hyperboloids, and this degenerate case review, we end the video here. Thanks for watching.